Hi, my name is Nathan, or Icarus Moth. I'm here with 343, back for part two of my trap drum tutorial. Today we're gonna to be focusing on snares and hi-hats specifically. For the snare, I actually grabbed one of my kick drums and copied it onto one of the pads of the snares. And then I just went and adjusted my parameters from here. Since I've already pretty much gone halfway I don't need to redo all of this for my snare. I can just make these quick adjustments. So I will do that here. Okay, now this is mighty rudimentary and very quick, but all I really adjusted was the first oscillator I fixed to a very specific frequency, which means if I were to throw a different note into the drum rack, like I had set for our kick drums, it doesn't matter what I set this to, it will always play the same pitch of sound because I have the main oscillator fixed to a frequency. Now, I changed the oscillator running into that to white noise, and then I just adjusted the pitch until I fit within that snare range that I was looking for, as I mentioned before, maybe that 200 or 100 to 400 hertz range. Now, I already had some made. They include a little bit more control over the white noise to give them that tail, but this one is perfectly satisfactory as well, so I will keep that. Now, if we play the two snares I have together. So like how I copied my kick drum into my snare drum rack to create the snare, I'm going to be copying the snare into the hi-hat drum rack to do the hi-hats because it's a good starting point. Now, we're gonna be focusing mostly on adjusting the tonality of the white noise in operator, but there are a couple of other things that we need to make sure that we do to ca really capture the essence of a hi-hat, right? Now, white noise isn't enough, is it? There's still that metallic aspect of a hi-hat that we really need to you know, make sure that we cover in our sound. So I'm going to be showing you some tricks that you can do with operator to really kind of capture that metallic sound. Now, the first hi-hat I have in this song sounds like this, and the other one sounds like this. Now. The part in the first one that gives it that metallic ring is actually what's happening between the first two oscillators here. So A is just my normal sine wave to create the shape of my sound, and B is what's really giving it its tonality. So I've cranked the frequency of B way high, so it's a really, really high pitch sound, and I'm running it entirely through oscillator A. So if I get rid of my white noise oscillator, which is C, it gives us this sound, which is really the metallic part of the hi-hat. And then when I add the white noise back in, it covers the rest of the hi-hat, right? Now, how much white noise I add kind of determines how metallic it is versus how white noisy it is. So I put it all the way up, but it's gonna be to taste, you know, depending on what you're looking for. Now, the second hi-hat is my closed hi-hat. Now, this is the one that's important for doing the rolls, you know, hi-hats do kind of follow like, almost like a rap top line when it comes to trap music. So it's important that this one, you know, sounds right and sits in the mix well. So mine sounds like this. And I don't have anything really crazy going on in the operator here, but if I play my hi-hat track back, I think you'll notice something very special going on with those ones in particular. So you'll notice that each hat that hits doesn't quite sound like the one before it. And that's because I'm actually automating the frequency of a frequency shifter. Now, this is not the same thing as creating pitch bends in my automation. This is a little bit different, but it's going to change the ratios of the pitch in my sound, which is going to help kind of create a metallic aspect to it as well. So if we look at this automation right here, we are going from a lower frequency on the frequency shifter up to a higher one, and we get this kind of almost wet, but also kind of metallic sounding aspect to the hi-hat. Now. This is kind of doubling as part of my hi-hat and also as a synth a little bit, but because I don't really have any specialized percussion in this song, I figured that adding some, you know, spice to the hi-hats would kind of cover that ground. So now we've talked about all three of the main drums in my drum kit. Let's play them all together and hear how they sound. Not bad, right? Hopefully you feel comfortable designing your own hats and snares in Ableton now. If you want to see any more tutorials from us, subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in taking courses online or here in New York City, click the link in the description. I'll see you in the next video.